In this video, I'm going to talk about the first app within uh, Center of Excellence Starter Kit, which uh, everyone should install uh, before we even start looking into another app uh, in the Center of Excellence platform. Uh, the first app is called as a COE Setup and Upgrade Visit. Now, this is the starting point app for your Center of Excellence journey. <clears throat> this app helps in setting up COE Starter Kit apps uh, it configures the following component. Uh, first, it confirms the prerequisites, whether you have uh, a specific set of admin permission to undertake Center of Excellence starter kit upgrade process or not. Uh, it will list down the upgrade history. <clears throat> if it's the first time you're installing it, you may not see anything over uh, there in the list, but if you're upgrading this uh, COE starter kit uh, month-wise, then you will see a history of what all actions has been taking place. Uh, during those upgrade uh, process. Uh, it will confirm mandatory settings, which we will go through it shortly. Uh, we'll conf uh, it will help you configure inventory data source. It will help you configure communication methods within the Center of Excellence uh, Starter Kit framework. So you may need to create some sort of a groups for uh, COE admins, COE makers, COE end users. So these are set of personas which uh, will interact with the app and that will help you establish those core governance uh, and uh, nurture components and uh, adoption frameworks. Uh, there is a section whereby uh, it needs to uh, undergo uh, a series of actions to enable the set of flows. Uh, so the set of flows are basically uh, flows which will allow a uh, center of excellence application to uh, uh, stabilize and uh, initiate some sort of uh, uh, actions uh, so that all those inventories within your environment gets collected. So there is an inventory flows which when enabled uh, skims through the uh, entire tenant uh, and try to extract number of apps, number of flows, number of makers, number of bots, number of pages. So those kind of statistics which you will uh, you know, find that uh, uh, populated in your Power BI reports or in the backend database table. Uh, there is a section for sharing in apps uh, and then uh, there are some guidance or instructions on uh, configuring the dashboard. Now this is how the screen will look like. Uh, it's basically a model driven app. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step sequential uh, uh, set of instructions which you will undergo uh, for uh, setting up the center of excellence platform within your environment. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so <clears throat> this is the Center of Excellence core components. Uh, so I'll show you the first. Uh, I'll go to the make.powerapps, and then uh, once you install your starter kit, uh, you will find a whole bunch of components being installed within your environment. Okay, if you follow the install process, you will technically install core components, uh, ALM accelerator, nurture components, governance component, and innovation backlog component solutions. Now the core component solution, which as you see over here is uh, version 4.13, which is technically an August 2023 release. Uh, once you uh, install for the first time or you upgrade it from your previous version, uh, you will be presented with the solution. Now, if I navigate to this solution, I will see a whole bunch of uh, inventory uh, within that particular solution. So there are 13 apps, there are 46 tables, 52 web resources, and uh, so on and so forth. You know, like these all information do exist within the solution. Now there are 96 cloud flows. Now, some of the cloud flows are set of flows, some are child flows, some are inventory flows. So uh, those all flows needs to be enabled within your environment for the center of excellence starter kit to work correctly. Now, how do we configure all these things? Uh, I'll show you in a while. So first thing, what you need to do is once you install Center of Excellence Starter Kit, go into the apps and access this app called a COE Setup and Upgrade Visit. Okay. So you click on this meatball icon and click on play. Once you open this, you will be landed in this particular page. Okay. So this is like COE Setup and Upgrade Visit app. Now it's a model driven app. It will help you uh, 
show uh, what all activities you may have uh, conducted within your environment okay now as i have upgraded it i see a lot of upgrade history but if you are doing it for the first time you may not see any information over here so as you see from this uh, screen uh, a pop up has come it tells you that uh, the first time when i installed it was 3.45 version and it was a success and then eventually it got upgraded and i encountered some failures and then finally uh, if you see uh, the import of 4.13 version uh, which i have done successfully okay so what you need to do is you just click need to click on acknowledge once you acknowledge it will <clears throat> throw up some sort of information like it will alert you if there are any permissions which needs to be granted or if there are uh, uh, flows which is currently not running or you know like some sort of information uh, will be displayed to you uh, if everything works fine it will just tell you that you do not have any unmanaged layers to review or uh, everything is fine then you just click on acknowledge and then uh, it will again do some sort of a check and uh, once all the checks are passed it will tell you that okay uh, let's let's move on to uh, configuring the uh, center of excellence starter kit so i have now acknowledged it uh, everything looks good to me as of now uh, this screen will uh, show you some uh, information about confirming the prerequisite so if you see here it says that you need to have a power platform service admin global talent admin or d365 service admin rights in order to install and configure coe starter kit so you need to have either of these rights so i already have it so there's no issue with it plus you need to have power apps per user license which this account currently has it and that's why it is showing a success you need to have one sort of microsoft 365 license so i have uh, e1 e3 license attached to my <coughs> user account uh, plus you need to have power automate per user license so i even uh, satisfy that uh, email enabled yes this particular account has outlook enabled uh, it, it is uh, it has an exchange license so that's all good so what i'm going to do is like i click on next now in case if you encounter any issue over here make sure that you first fulfill those prerequisite because if you do not fulfill those prerequisite uh, the next steps will automatically fail for your account okay so i click on next now, once I click on next, I'll be taken to the next stage, which is configuring the communication method. So if you see here, configuring communication method, I have an admin persona, maker persona, and user persona. What you need to do is you need to create a group within your Microsoft 365 admin center. Okay. Now, first thing, go into navigate to the Microsoft 365 admin center, create a Microsoft 365 group. And uh, once you create that group, uh, I have made a, a convention that I will name it as CEO-admin, CEO-makers, and CEO-users. Once you configure that group, uh, you click on configure group, and then you select from this list. Okay. Now, here you will see the uh, group uh, which already exists, and then I'll select this group, and then I'll say select group. I have already done that, so I'm not going to do that now. So I'll cancel this out. So, so this basically... Uh, section will help in communication of apps solutions within your power platform environment to an end user so admin will receive an admin related uh, messages or uh, information makers will receive uh, you know, any uh, activity which you do within your coe apps so those all information will be propagated to the relevant makers and users okay now i click on next once you click on next, there will be a set of mandatory settings which you may need to put in. Uh, usually, most of the time, we put Power Platform uh, region as commercial default. However, uh, if you are on a different tenant on GCC, HCC High, or DoD, you can select that. But 90% of the solutions are commercial default, so you select that. Tenant ID. This is like how to get tenant ID. I will cover in one of my another video. But uh, these all information can be easily sorted by logging into portal.azure.com, navigating to Azure Active Directory, and then get the tenant ID details from that. Uh, if, if this is a production environment, yes, this is a production environment for me. Uh, and then I put my email address. Okay. 
now click on next it will take me to configuring inventory data uh, the screen uh, loading of the screen might take a bit of uh, time uh, because uh, it what essentially it does is it tries to check how many flows exist whether the flow is currently running or not and then it will present you with a list if any of the flow has failed or any of the flow has uh, failed to start so it, it does all these actions in the back end and then it will present you with some sort of a list okay now uh, if you see here uh, it tells you two aspects now one is cloud flows and one is data export <clears throat> if your organization is say has more than 10,000 apps okay it is always advisable uh, uh, to use data export which is in preview mode uh, if it is less than that it is advisable to use cloud flows now what happens in cloud flows and data flows data export is you know in cloud flows uh, all the inventory uh, based informations are run using uh, center of excellence uh, uh, power automate flows so it which will be more heavy for the tenant okay and that's why uh, microsoft suggests that better to use data export in case you have something uh, more uh, apps or flows or uh, stats of your inventory is much on the higher side okay i'll cover this in a separate video about the differences okay now when i click on next i will click on next it says uh run set of flows now it is three tick for me but you may not find the tick over here if you don't find it just click on refresh then it will tell you that whether this flow is running or not this flow is very much important to collect uh information within your tenant uh if i click on next similarly uh, i will see uh, inventory flows so those inventory flows will be uh, uh, again a, a set of uh, power automate flows which will help you uh, collect various information like number of apps number of flows number of uh, bots number of power pages site and so on so forth so it's a huge list uh, and that's why it, it might take a while uh, once the flow starts running and that's why you know we have these two options whether to use cloud flows or a data export uh method to uh, offload that processing in azure data lake storage now for me all inventory flows have been turned on all good in case you find some list over here just try to enable that okay now next configure data flows uh, uh, is uh missed now because we haven't selected data flows so we have just selected cloud flows so that's why you'll skip this step now once all your apps are configured what you need to do is like you need to share this app so if i click on share all which i've already done these particular apps will be shared with the users now which users uh, if you see here some of the apps are admin related and some of the apps are maker related so in the second step when the when we configured the communication method at that time we specified that uh, we have created some groups right now in that group if we add say five users in makers five users in admin those particular users will be receiving those apps and then they can perform their actions next step publish power bi dashboard it will just give an instruction it won't do anything further than that i will try to cover in more detail in my upcoming videos uh, this is just an instructional set you can watch the video you can read the documentation but what it essentially says is that how to set up the power bi dashboard uh, uh, from the power bi template file which is already provided as a part of uh, cv starter kit download when you click on next all your uh, <coughs> power platform center of excellence uh, initial set of apps will get configured and provisioned and uh, that's that's particular thing uh, this particular upgrade visit is now completed so if i click on done uh, it will take you to an another section called as more features so now these all things are some sort of actions within uh, center of excellence set of visit uh, through this we can configure individual feature now i'm not going to cover this in this video but i'm going to uh, take that in another set of videos uh, so that uh, all this uh, information is properly configured within your tenant uh, in a seamless way. So that's it, folks. Uh, that's all about CU set up an upgrade visit. Uh, it's a model driven app. It is the first app which you need to look into before you start configuring the center of excellence uh, setup process. Thank you.